Welcome to Kansas Ag Report with your host, Brian Hallman. Welcome to Kansas Ag Report. I'm Brian Holman, and here's our lineup for today's show. In Ag News, we'll take a look at local and national headlines affecting Kansas farmers. In our Ag feature, we sit down with Representative Mike Pompeo of Kansas for a two-part interview about the National Standardized GMO Labeling Bill. And in Inside Kansas Ag, Kansas Wheat talks to us about volunteer wheat, and KDA provides us with important information for Kansas farmers and ranchers. And in news you need to know, we get our weekly update from the Kansas Livestock Association, we'll look back at last week's market activity with the guys from Paragon, and we'll let you know about important events coming up around the state of Kansas. Glad you could join us. Closed captioning brought to you by The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. KansasSoybeans.org Ag Risk Solutions. Experience, knowledge, integrity. Your crop insurance solution, Ag Risk Solutions. Kansas Weed Commission, leaders in the adoption of profitable innovations for wheat. Online at kswheat.com. Kansas Livestock Association, supporting our members' business interests to meet consumers' demands. KLA.org. Here's our national headlines for this week in Ag News. The GMO labeling bill passed in the House and went on to President Obama's desk to be signed into law. Farm groups say the bill is a crucial step forward in informing consumers about the safe ingredients that go into their food. It is the hope that the labeling option in this law will encourage public acceptance of this reliable biotechnology while preempting the state-by-state -state patchwork laws. The USDA has raised its 2016 production outlook for corn, soybean, and winter wheat. In June, the USDA increased its planted acreage figures, including record soybean acreage in the third highest corn planted area since 1944. Corn production is now expected at 14.5 billion bushels. Winter wheat is estimated at 1.6 billion bushels, with a record high yield of 53.9 bushels per acre. Spring wheat is set at 550 million bushels. Soybeans are projected at 3.8 billion bushels. Over the past year, many big food companies like Walmart, General Mills, and McDonald's have pledged to source their eggs from cage-free hens in the coming years, putting a lot of pressure on egg producers to ditch their cages, which means higher cost. And since premium eggs are not selling well, the average price for cage-free is $4 compared to a dollar for conventional eggs, many producers are hesitant to invest in cage-free systems. An egg shortage ensued after an avian flu outbreak and prices of conventional eggs shot up, which narrowed the price difference between generic eggs and the usually much pricier cage-free ones. But as prices have stabilized, more and more consumers are choosing the less expensive conventional eggs over cage-free. An ag economist says increasing pressure on net farm incomes is impacting the ag lending environment. Nathan Kaufman with the Omaha branch of the Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City says continued uncertainty in commodity markets is causing concern among lenders. Lenders are worried about financial stress on farmers and their working capital, and therefore lenders are being cautious about what their portfolios might look like moving forward. And in local news, a new type of farm has been established in Kansas with a primary focus on water conservation for crops and livestock. Three water technology farms have been created in response to public input in the long-term vision for the future of water supply in Kansas. The Kansas Water Office is providing financial support for the installation of equipment for those willing to integrate a water conservation area and participate as a demonstration farm. You can contact the Kansas Water Office for more information. The Kansas Department of Agriculture has received a USDA Farmers Market Promotion Program grant to create a Kansas Farmers Market Market Toolkit. The toolkit will provide marketing and promotional material food sampling and demonstration equipment, and other resources to 20 farmers markets in Kansas in order to promote awareness. For more information about farmers markets in Kansas or the Kansas Farmers Market Toolkit, go to fromthelandofkansas.com forward slash 
farmers markets. Up next in our Ag Feature, we sit down with Representative Mike Pompeo of Kansas for a two-part interview about the National Standardized GMO Labeling Bill. You're watching Kansas Ag Report. Please stay tuned. This segment brought to you by Kansas Livestock Association, supporting our members' business interests to meet consumers' demands. KLA.org. Oldie Seed Farms, carrying soil-specific seed. Find them on the web at oldieseed.com. That's O-H-L-D-E seed.com. Grass and grain, online or in the mail. Keeping Kansas farmers informed for over 60 years. Grassandgrain.com. Kansas Weed Commission, leaders in the adoption of profitable innovations for wheat. Online at kswheat.com. Imagine having someone help you pick the best corn hybrids for every field on your farm. Your Oldie representative can combine your data with his data to offer a field-by-field -field prescription. Contact Oldie Seed today at 877-692-4555. Biodiesel made from sustainable resources is diversifying our fuel supply. This year, biodiesel will displace over a billion gallons of fossil fuel nationwide. It's making our economy stronger and our communities healthier. It's working here and across America. Get biodiesel going in your community. Visit americasadvancedbiofuel.com. You need a partner that you can count on to be there for your business. Providing a depth of understanding to risk management issues so you don't have to. A knowledgeable support team located in your area, delivering products and services to make you more successful. Imagine having someone help you pick the best corn hybrids for every field on your farm. Your Oldie representative can combine your data with his data to offer a field-by-field -field prescription. Contact Oldie Seed today at 877-692-4555. Good morning, and thanks for staying with us. We're in Wichita, Kansas. We're at Congressman Mike Pompeo's office, and Mike, thanks for joining us this morning. You're in uh, an election year this year, so I appreciate you taking the few minutes to spend with uh, us. Brian, it's so. great to be with you this morning. Perfect. Um, two years ago, about two years ago, you introduced the first legislation for the GMO labeling bill, which has now been signed by the president. Um, what an uphill battle. It was an enormous undertaking, but an important one. Uh, it was the case that a couple years back I had some Kansas farmers come in and talk to me about the importance of biotechnology to what they do. I knew a little bit about it, but not a heck of a lot, uh, and spent the next few months trying to understand uh, what was happening. There was a state, Vermont, that had passed a law that was going to essentially ultimately prohibit them from using this technology, technology mm -hmm. that had allowed them to increase crop yields, use less water, do really important things for the, for the global food supply chain. Uh, and so I worked with the committee that I sit on to say, hey, we ought to go take this on. Nobody else really wanted to do it. Uh, and so I spent a year and a half just trying to convince my colleagues on both the left and the right mm -hmm. that this was the right thing for the global food supply chain to make sure that uh, we could still feed the world. And what became very interesting is it was going to, if Vermont law was allowed to stand, it was going to increase the price of food for the average family by 20 or 50 bucks a month. For some people, that's not a, a big deal, but for a lot of folks, 20 or $50 a month is the difference between making it and not making it. And so we kept grinding away and ultimately managed to get an enormous number of House Republicans and a whole bunch of House Democrats to vote for the House version of the bill. And then we worked for about six months to get the Senate uh, to pass their side of the legislation. And Senator Roberts worked incredibly hard to make that happen. Well, not only that, Oregon passed the same similar type law that Vermont had passed. So we were going to have the opportunity to have multiple laws across the U.S. that food manufacturers and farmers and everybody else were going to have to try to keep up with. This, this was the challenge. Was uh, the, It started in Vermont, but there would be cities that would pass rules. And ultimately what would happen is there would be rules that were not only different, but but conflicted. Mm -hmm. And so you'd be required to store your seed one way for one set of rules and something for another, and you, it would literally have been a mess. And so we knew we needed uh, to reflect the fact that this was interstate commerce uh, and create a federal rule to allow folks to take this product, which is safe. Mm 
Mm -hmm. uh, one of the funniest things about this is when people talk about GMOs, you, you start to hear people say things, well, I'm worried, I'm, I don't think they're safe. Uh, no one in the entire process, no professional who ever testified, we had multiple hearings, ever said that this technology was unsafe. Uh, and once we crossed that hurdle, we were now talking about how we're going to go about making sure this technology can be used to improve the environment, uh, to make food even healthier, and do amazing things for the global food supply chain for the decades ahead. And uh, I'm excited that we were able to get it finished. It was a bumpy road, um, but we pulled it off. But well worth it. Uh, much, much, much worth it. Um, we did a really good thing. It was probably the most important food legislation of the last 20 years. Perfect. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to finish up with Mike Pompeo. You're watching Kansas Ag Report. We'll see you in just a minute. This segment brought to you by Farm Bureau, a grassroots ag organization representing the state's farmers and ranchers since 1919. KFB.org. Oldie Seed Farms, carrying soil-specific seed. Find them on the web at oldieseed.com. That's O-H-L-D-E seed.com. Grass and grain, online or in the mail. Keeping Kansas farmers informed for over 60 years. Grassandgrain.com. Kansas Weed Commission, leaders in the adoption of profitable innovations for wheat. Online at kswheat.com. Thanks for staying with us. We're in Wichita and we're the, uh, at the office of Congressman Mike Pompeo. And Mike, again, thanks for joining us this morning. Again, you're on uh, re-election and, <laughs> and so a lot going on. So I appreciate you taking the time out to, to spend with us. The GMO bill was more than just labeling. I, I mean, because I think some people may think, well, it was just putting a label on a box. It's a lot more than just putting a label on a box. Yeah, it wasn't about labeling. Ultimately, there is a finite group of people who desperately want to make sure that this technology goes away. So this was a first step. It was the camel's nose under the tent effort to ultimately prohibit the use of this technology. It's This technology is no different than the traditional role that farmers have played in improving products over time, right? We have uh, lots of efforts to change products, to change crops, to change how we grow cattle that we do because we learn to make them better. We have more protein, uh, uh, resistant to drought. We all just of the, become more efficient we become, we become We become better at, at producing the food at an affordable price right. for uh, the next billion people in the world. And so this is just another technology used to do that, just as safe as the older technologies. And incredibly important. Yeah, this wasn't just about this wasn't just about putting a few words on a label of a product for food. If it had been, I wouldn't have spent two and a half years working on it. Right. It was much more important than that. Well, and not only that, I think people forget how much time and effort goes into creating seed for farmers and the cost of seed. I think people <laughs> who do not farm do not realize what it costs to grow food. Uh, I hear this all the time when I'm out traveling in the district and talking to folks who, who do this for a living. Mm -hmm. uh, the enormous cost of these inputs, these mm -hmm. seeds, uh, and boy, you better get something for that. Uh, you better get, <laughs> right. an, you better get right. an improved outcome for your crops, right. more, uh, more revenue so that you can continue to uh, make your family farm a success. Uh, we, we, we watch this assault on the food industry, and we've now been able to find one place at least to push back hard. Right. And I think most people who don't farm and, and aren't around agriculture, like, I mean, the district you're sure. in and what I do on a daily basis is how affordable fo food <laughs> is here in the U.S. compared to anywhere else in the world. Yeah, we do. We do an amazing job. Yeah. We do. Our, our, our produce, whether, it's, whether it's folks who are growing or livestock and ranchers, we do a remarkable job of doing this, by the way, in a way that protects the air keeps our drinking water safe, all of the things that we all want. Uh, our Kansas farmers are incredible stewards of their land and their resources. Uh, and uh, I think they are grossly underappreciated around the country. Uh, meat was left off the GMO labeling bill, and we've just got about uh, 40 seconds left here. It was, so we had to decide how to define the scope of the products. USDA has w traditionally done an excellent job of figuring out how they were gonna treat uh, organic foods and uh, non-GMO foods, and so they actually handled that pretty well. It made sense in this legislation. Uh, we didn't have the same Vermont problem. It made sense to treat it differently than we did uh, the grown products. Well, and not only that, you look at, say, the Oregon bill where they were talking about wild-caught versus <laughs> farm-raised salmon. I mean, it, this could have gone haywire. It could have gone very badly. We should also know it's, not ever, it's never over. Uh, they'll come back again. <laughs> and we'll just keep grinding away. Perfect. Thanks for joining us this morning, and next week we're going to have another interview with our Congressman Mike Pompeo. Watching Kansas Ag Report. I'll see you in just a minute. 
If you would like to advertise your business on Kansas Ag Report, give us a call, 785-580-3287. Volunteer wheat doesn't all emerge at the same time, unfortunately. Where volunteer is emerging early, producers should consider making their first control measures sooner than they might like. Dallas Peterson, K-State Research and Extension Weed Management Specialist, said producers often like to wait several weeks after harvest before making their first herbicide application to control volunteer wheat. This allows as much volunteer as possible to emerge before spraying it or tilling it for the first time. Often, a second application or tillage operation will be needed later in the summer to eliminate the green bridge to wheat. But where wheat was hailed out and volunteer has already emerged at the time of harvest, control should begin immediately after harvest if possible. Peterson said even if this ends up requiring one more field pass than normal to keep volunteer under control throughout the summer, starting early in this situation will help prevent even bigger problems down the road. It should be noted that grazing volunteer is not an effective control option because there's green wheat material left and the mites survive in that material. If volunteer wheat and other hosts are not controlled throughout the summer and are infested with wheat curl mites, the mites will survive until fall and could infest newly planted wheat at that time. Wheat curl mite infestations of wheat often lead to wheat streak mosaic infections. Do your weekend plans include a local farmer's market? It's a great time to check one out because August has been proclaimed Kansas Farmer's Market Month. I'm Julie Roller with the Kansas Department of Agriculture Trademark Program, and I'm happy to invite you to join me and thousands of other Kansans who enjoy fresh, locally grown produce, along with a variety of other products made by local artisans. Farmer's markets have grown to be a visible and important link between producers and consumers of Kansas products, and they provide farmers, particularly those from small and mid-sized farms, the ability to cultivate closer relationships with their customers. The Kansas Department of Agriculture, through the From the Land of Kansas Trademark Program, works with over 70 registered farmers markets, providing informational opportunities like state and regional workshops and online marketing resources. KDA also assists farmers markets with food safety best practices and promotes the markets across the state. Farmers markets have been growing in popularity and they serve as a vital part of the culture of local communities. They also keep revenue in those communities, which helps to strengthen small businesses and the local economies. Farmers markets and the Kansas farmers who you'll find there contribute to the health, well-being, and the quality of life in Kansas. So get out there this August and celebrate Farmers Market Month throughout Kansas. If you don't know where your nearest farmers market is, you can find a map at fromthelandofkansas.com slash explore. This segment brought to you by Farm Bureau, a grassroots ag organization representing the state's farmers and ranchers since 1919. KFB.org. Old Seed Farms, carrying soil-specific seed. Find them on the web at oldeseed.com. That's O-H-L-D-E seed.com. Grass and grain, online or in the mail. Keeping Kansas farmers informed for over 60 years. Grassandgrain.com. Kansas Weed Commission, leaders in the adoption of profitable innovations for wheat. Online at kswheat.com. Imagine having someone help you pick the best corn hybrids for every field on your farm. Your oldie representative can combine your data with his data to offer a field-by-field -field prescription. Contact Oldie Seed today at 877-692-4555. I will take action against herbicide-resistant weeds. I will know my weeds, and I will stop them before they go to seed. I will do whatever it takes to give my crops the upper hand, and I will use multiple herbicide sites of action because every action counts. I will take action, this time, for all time. You need a partner that you can count on to be there for your business. Providing a depth of understanding to risk management issues so you don't have to. A knowledgeable support team located in your area, delivering products and services to make you more successful.
The producer-funded Kansas Wheat Innovation Center was built to get improved varieties into the hands of farmers faster. Kansas Wheat, farmers advancing their future through wheat genetics research. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Biodiesel, made from sustainable resources, is diversifying our fuel supply. This year, biodiesel will displace over a billion gallons of fossil fuel nationwide. It's making our economy stronger and our communities healthier. It's working here and across America. Get biodiesel going in your community. Visit americasadvancedbiofuel.com. Imagine having someone help you pick the best corn hybrids for every field on your farm. Your oldie representative can combine your data with his data to offer a field-by-field -field prescription. Contact Oldie Seed today at 877-692-4555. The National Cattlemen's Beef Association and Kansas Livestock Association filed comments on a proposed USDA rule addressing organic livestock and poultry standards. The proposal would establish animal welfare and livestock living condition standards through the National Organic Program. This would be the first time specific welfare standards were contained in federal law and, according to cattle industry analysis, could create a dangerous precedent if applied to conventional agriculture. NCBA and KLA informed USDA the checkoff funded beef quality assurance program is the gold standard for cattle care and handling recommendations. If USDA is looking to provide guidance to organic producers, NCBA and KLA suggested certification through the beef quality assurance program. While the cattle industry supports voluntary marketing programs like the National Organic Program, creating a separate set of animal handling standards could be confusing. Efforts by USDA to set a secondary animal welfare standard will inevitably mislead consumers into thinking cattle in an organic program are handled with a greater degree of care than conventionally produced cattle. Consumers need to understand, regardless of what product they choose to buy, the commitment to safety, quality, and animal welfare remains the same. NCBA and KLA encouraged USDA to withdraw the proposed rule and work with all producers to draft new language. Good morning. I'm Derek Hermish with Paragon Ag. As a farmer, there are two questions that he asks of himself all the time. Can I fix this myself? And is this the best use of my time? In the good old days, before 200 bushel per acre corn, for most farmers it wasn't as much of a choice. You were going to fix it yourself because your options were limited on who else was going to do it. Plus stuff just wasn't as complex. You didn't need a college degree in computer science to run a planner. That's not to say that most farmers still don't do their own mechanic work, but in a lot of cases you simply can't afford to anymore. Time is money and fixing stuff these days involves a lot more than a wrench and a can-do attitude. So at a certain point, you either succumb to the fact that you don't know everything and fixing this is going to be more of a job than you're willing to do, or you've simply been swamped in the middle of harvest and you know you don't have time to deal with this. So you bring on some outside help, or you hire another employee. That same line of evolution can be applied, applied to a farmer's marketing practices as well. A lack of time and sometimes desire to learn some of the basic marketing strategies is an attitude you don't want to have in today's marketplace. Machinery isn't the same as it once was, and the markets don't move like they used to either. If you're looking to improve your marketing game, you'll have to ask yourself, is this something I can fix myself, and is this the best use of my time? I'm Derek Hermish. Have a good day.
closed captioning brought to you by the soybean checkoff progress powered by kansas farmers kansassoybeans.org ag risk solutions experience knowledge integrity your crop insurance solution ag risk solutions kansas wheat commission leaders in the adoption of profitable innovations for wheat online at kswheat.com kansas livestock association supporting our members business interests to meet consumers demands kla.org Well, that's our show for today. I hope you'll join us each week for more news and information about agriculture in the state of Kansas. I'm Brian Holman, and thanks for watching. Biodiesel made from sustainable resources is diversifying our fuel supply. This year, Biodiesel will displace over a billion gallons of fossil fuel nationwide. It's making our economy stronger and our communities healthier. It's working here and across America. Get biodiesel going in your community. Visit americasadvancedbiofuel.com. You need a partner that you can count on to be there for your business. Providing a depth of understanding to risk management issues so you don't have to. A knowledgeable support team located in your area, delivering products and services to make you more successful. Here at Blue River Traders, we have the greatest selection of rustic and western furniture in Kansas. At Blue River Traders, you can select from an inventory of rustic lodge or western furnishings. With a designer on hand, Blue River Traders will help create the look you desire.